George is constantly aware that he's dealing with something that is life and death. And unfortunately, you do have to have those conversations with a five-year-old to get him to understand the severity of the situation. We have to medicate George every time he eats. We have to medicate George every time we see his blood sugar climbing or falling. We probably check him or um, administer some kind of medication insulin, probably up to 40, 50 times a day. So type 1 diabetes is an autoimmune condition and this means that the immune system mistakenly targets and destroys insulin producing beta cells and insulin is really important because it transports glucose from the blood into cells where it's used as an energy source. Without insulin we can't use glucose as that energy source and the body can begin to shut down. He's got type 1 diabetes means his body doesn't produce any insulin so in effect we and he are acting as his pancreas. Over time these high levels of glucose in the blood can cause damage to a number of important tissues and this includes um, the kidneys and the nerves, the eyes um, and can cause cardiovascular problems. So it's a very serious disease which uh, has some very serious consequences including uh, for example kidney failure, uh, you know, heart disease, uh, diabetic foot ulcers and so on. It's probably important to realise that there is no treatment for diabetes, whether it's type 1 or type 2, that would completely get rid of the disease. So unfortunately, once you get diabetes, it remains with you uh, for the rest of, the, of your life. What you want to achieve is to allow the diabetic patient to live almost a normal life as a healthy person simply by controlling the blood sugar level. The only treatment for type 1 diabetes is insulin and at the moment this is administered in liquid form and this is either through injections throughout the day or what's becoming more common is an insulin pump where insulin is sort of drip fed into the body via a cannula. More and more insulin is delivered uh, via wearable uh, pumps or in some cases even pumps that are implanted into the body. And of course uh, it makes sense for those, for those pumps to be as small as possible, which means that the insulin which is contained in them is as concentrated as possible. If you concentrate insulin, it's very prone to aggregation. In other words, the insulin molecules in the liquid composition, they collide, they interact, and they form irreversible aggregates. That's where Aracor uh, comes in. We are really experts in understanding how we can manipulate proteins and peptides to make them more stable or to make them behave in a certain way after they are injected. Any development in healthcare treatment or cure takes multiple partners to get it from the basic science to clinical delivery to patients. We think at JDRF that it's really important to harness the different abilities of all of these actors. I am confident in the people that are doing this work and I'm really optimistic and blown away by some of the science that I've seen and some of the developments I've seen, even in the short time that he's had type 1. But really the biggest progress that has been made so far is in terms of uh, new drug delivery methods which deliver insulin exactly at the right time in the right quantity. We are relying solely on these companies to, to make these breakthroughs and to find a cure for George so he no, no longer stands out, so he no longer has to think about life and death every single day, and so he gets his freedom back.